welcome to The Creatives, Radio Now's entertainment talk show. My name is Doris Okori. You've been listening to us every Friday at 9.05 a.m. and repeats at 8 p.m. on Radio Now 95.3 FM Lagos and also on our other platforms on our website www.thisisradionow.com on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash thisisradionow and on YouTube, Radio Now Studios. Today in the studio, I have with me a very fascinating guest. I'm super pumped about this one, as always. I have with me in the studio one of the most eccentric stylists in Nigeria. You definitely want to stick around for this one. But you know how we do. Let's go! He is a style expert who caters for individuals who seek to express the eccentricity of style. With a modern, cheerful and colorful aesthetic, his brand is keen on crafting styles for individuals who think outside the box. He has styled celebrities such as singer Simi, reality stars Nini, Neo, actor Daniel F. Young and many more. Welcome Creative Director Swaz Original Swazi. Swazi. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, when, I saw, when I saw your name, I was like... What is Swazi? What does Swazi even mean? <laughs> that should be my first question. What does Swazi mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the the idea behind the name Swazi was, you know, when I was in high school and all that, people call me Swaz boy, Swag boy, Swag this, Swag that oh. because of my love for fashion and stuff. So, as time goes on, when I was like, okay, let me get a name for myself for the brand. And my sister was like, why not go with Swazi? I said, Swazi like Swaziland. <laughs> 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 he said no, double Z I, and I was like, hmm, okay, it's in sync with you know the the swag, swag boy, yes. the swag boy, and all that. So it's a very yeah. unique name, though. Thank you I so really, much. really love it. Thank you. So, what is a typical day like in the life of a stylist or a style expert like you, Swazi? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a whole lot, you know. Um, comes with a lot of pressure. A typical day for me. You know, normal day, clients call, appointments, maybe some days consultation, some days you're not doing consultation, maybe you are in the um in my showroom mm. sorting fits or meeting with one designer or the other, trying to sort fits for the clients and stuff. And some days you are shooting and maybe one designer might decide to just yeah. do anyhow and you know, and they are left with um in some cases, it might be something that I've been working on for months, for, for days, for weeks, and last minute on that day, there's no fit or nothing for the Just client, and they're right? working on a whole new outfit. And so, you know what, the typical day for me is, I don't know, it comes with a lot, a lot of pressure, pressure a lot Aww. of, you know, trying to make your clients happy and all that. Yeah. So Swazi, when I was researching you, yeah, I actually found out okay. that you used to be a recording artist. Please, I need to know. What, <laughs> tell me about that. I'm interested. I beg. I used to be a recording artist until I decided to put like a Rihanna on them. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, Rihanna. Don't do that now. So do you still do music? Um, actually, I record songs. Um, okay. Just like Rihanna records songs. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I record songs. Um, but I haven't been to studio like in six months now. Okay. Um, that's because I've been more focused on building the, the brand and um, some other brands. Um, the Lifestyle Lagos, which is like the styling agency, um, Swaz Originals, which is my new bag collection and new bag line that I'll be releasing on 31st of this month. Um, and a couple of other things. So I used to be a music artist. Or should I say I'm still a music artist. Okay. Until... <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, the thing is, I've always been a stylist. Okay. I've always loved fashion. I've always loved making people around me, my friends, look good. Mm. And it wasn't something I was doing professionally till one day, yeah. It's in Osa, the actress called me and was like, oh, I want you to style me. I said, I'm not a stylist, though. He said, no, all those things you wear yourself, I want you to wear me, I want you to style me like you. I was like, no, you can't, it's men. She said, yeah, that's how I want to look. Wow. And I was, I couldn't huh. sleep that night. I Why? was under pressure. pressure. Oh. I did it for fun. It wasn't something I was doing for, you know, so, and my friends were around. Um, I remember telling Somadina, um, and he was like, ah, let's go now, we'll do it, don't worry, I will drive you, we'll do it, all of us will do it, let's sort it out. 
Wow. <laughs> After that, I got paid. She actually paid. I wasn't expecting anything, but she paid me. And I think she paid me like 50,000. And I was like, wait, people make money from this. <laughs> Abi, you can't think I'm as far as you are. <laughs> so, and that was how it started. And six months, seven months later, I didn't do anything about it again. Then seven months later, during um, lockdown, that was when I started giving it like a second thought. I was like, okay, I can actually do this styling thing because people still call me. They still ask me stuff. Then... I spoke to my friends again about it and they were like, hey, yes, we can do it. We can also do it. We can support you. We'll be there Aww. for you. And we came up with the name The Lifestyle Lagos because I wanted it to be different from the name Swazi. Mm -hmm. So that was how we came up with the name. And we started. I haven't posted it yet on my page or anywhere. And Rekasani called me to start on the Fire You video. Mm. And that was like, okay. Swazi, I know you have Swaz Original and of yeah. course you have the Lifestyle Lagos. Yeah. What's the difference? Like, what's the difference basically? Because I mean... Okay, um, Swaz Originals is like, um, for now, we're launching like a bag line. Okay. Um, it's a fashion line that I am like the creative director and we're into a lot of things. Um, right now, we're working on our ready to wear. Um, not in Nigeria, but... Oshie. In China, some other places. So nice. Swaz Original is like that brand that, uh, okay, I want to wear Swaz Original t shirts, bags, shoes, so many other things, sports line, cosmetics in future, depending on where. <laughs> then the Lifestyle Lagos is the styling agency. Okay. So the Lifestyle Lagos is, in the beginning, it was just me and maybe along the line my sister. Um, but now I'm thinking of having more. I want it to be a home to creatives. Mm. I want it to be a home to other stylists as well. I want it to be a home to so many photographers, videographers, and all that. Even right now, we offer like different packages to clients and mm. all that. Nice. But at the same time, I don't want it to be just me. I want a situation whereby other stylists can reach out to me and say, okay, I want to be work with the likes of Lagos, and please, I want to work with you people. And works do come often. Mm. So there are some that I can do. There are some that <clears throat> I send assistants and stuff. To. So those other work, I want, just want it to be like, okay, when I have like a music video shoot, I have like a stylist handling this. Okay. All I need to do is just to supervise or just see what they are going there with and all that. Um, then we have this, okay, you can go for this. Okay, this one, they want me, I can go for this one. So I just want it to be a home to different creatives and all that. So basically the lifestyle Lagos is like a home for collaboration. Yeah. Oh, nice. I actually like when people actually collaborate. It's actually Thank fun. You. So, I mean, you're a creative and you do a lot of creative stuff. Mm. What is your creative process like? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm, it's a whole lot. Um, sometimes I create with my sister around. Um, my sister is also a designer. We own another clothing line, which is called LDM, um, Look Different Mark. And... It's like a couture brand. Mm. So um, most times when I have ideas and all that, I call her and say, come, 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 come. There's this idea I have. I want to do this. I want it to be this. I want it to She'd be like, dead this idea. Dead it. <laughs> dead this idea. Dead it. It's not giving anything. <laughs> and some days she'll be like, okay, yes, we can do this. We can actually do this. Then some days I'm on my own, you know, being creative on my own, trying to experiment and whenever i try to do such things um i always don't want to do it with clients mm. that pay me i want to do it with i want to try it out with models or people that are not actually paying me let me see what people think about it or their opinion about this certain style or this certain thing i want to try out so it doesn't look like oh i pay you to do this job and yes. the so <laughs> yes so i always want to be in that space where I'm free to do whatever I want. I'm free to explore. I'm free to do anything I want. And funny thing is, I have a couple of clients that when they reach out to me, they just want me to do me. Ah, they they're don't just want like... me to... I know there are some that will say, send mood boards, send this, send that. It's, it's exciting sometimes where I don't really... I don't fancy mood boards. When you tell me to send mood boards, it's like, oh, so... no, these people just want me to just send them one thing and bring that thing exactly the yes. way they see in pictures. But... When clients say, okay, do your thing. Just wing it. I'm always like, okay, this is time for me to, you know, yeah. go all out and do whatever I can. And Yeah. Nice. So, 
what challenges do you face as a stylist? A lot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Like, um, from designers, one, designers might end up giving you their own last minute. I remember um, AMVCA, um, three weeks before AMVCA, Nene reached out to me and she was like, okay, um, I finally made up my mind to attend AMVCA, so what do we wear, what do we do? So it took me time. I came up with a sketch and all that. I showed her, she was like, okay, this is good, this is good. Who do you think will execute this dress? And I was like, okay, caviar woman would do it. Nini, we sent her pictures of the fabric. She was like, okay, she like it. We sent her everything and all that. And three days to AMVC, there was no fittings done or anything. Oh, and yeah. the designer was almost done with the outfit. Okay. And I was like, okay, come, let's go for it. She said, yeah, we don't need to do fittings now. Yeah. I know this coat will come out. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And I was like, no, we must do fittings. And this happened the same time that you know, we're doing birthday shoots, Big Brother Niger reunion, all, everything was just happening at the same time. She was like, I'm stressed out, you know that, please, can we just leave these fittings? We'll do it that day. I said, hey. no, this is AMVC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we got to the designer's place and she ended up not liking the dress. OMG. The dress was good. Big shout out to Caviar Woman. She did amazing with the dress. I wish I could show you guys the picture of the dress because we imported the fabric abroad. We did. Aww. We went all out with the dress, and you know, it's up to the client to tell yes. you, "Oh, I'm not. This is not what I not feel feeling like." Not it, yeah. So she complained about the color, and immediately, you know, the designer was. We were trying to con. They were trying to convince her, and I was like, "No, can we make a new fit? We have less than four Oh my god! Hours. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> less than forty-eight hours, and the designer was like, "Okay, what do you want?" Right there and then, we were there till like 3 a.m. No Sketch way. <laughs> Sketching new outfits, new designs, looking, you know, trying to do a lot of things at the same time. And she, Nini is not like my only client for AMVC. I have other three clients. <laughs> 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 it was a whole lot. And on the day of AMVC, my friends were calling me, ah, you guys need to shoot a day before. I said, no, don't worry, we'll shoot a day before. Hmm. Um, Timmy called me. Timmy was like, Ah, you guys are not here yet. The red carpet is starting in less than one hour. Blah, Timmy, blah, blah. the actor? No, Timmy, okay. my friend, he's okay, also a stylist. Okay. Yeah, my friends, we all reach out. We all got each other and oh, we're like nice. supportive and all that. So he was calling me, he said, You need to be on the red carpet in less than one hour. I said, Okay. When he was calling me, I was still at the designer's place. We we're still working on the dress and makeup was. <laughs> a whole lot was happening at the same time. So Oof. it was. It's like that almost all the time then that one is even like the this the smaller one because the designer was able to pull it off though we didn't make it to the red carpet on time and all that but yeah and Aww. i know a lot of fashion people like charles was like behind the scenes saying <laughs> okay the neck should have been like this <laughs> <laughs> was it the red dress? I actually like the, the red dress. Mm, the red dress. Mm. Yes, the I like the red dress. Like this, this one. Have, I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> then there are some cases that during Fashion Week, I remember one designer. I paid hundreds of thousands, and this is like a top tier designer. I paid money to make a dress for my clients coming from France for Fashion Week, and this designer ended up using a very cheap fabric. Oh snap! One thing I don't joke with when it comes to my brand is fabric and finishing work. <clears throat> I always tell people, I don't care about the design. Any design is fine. Mm -hmm. But you see the finishing of that design, you see the fabric of that design. To me, I feel it makes it look expensive, no matter how the design. That's why Balenciaga would do anything and still, because the finishing work is good, the, the, the fabric, everything. When you see it, you're like, okay, the design is not good, but this fabric is given. Yes. This finishing work is dope to me. I know some other people might have their own opinion. So I paid the designer to make this dress and she ended up doing just anything. Oh and she God. sent it to me 12 hours before the day we were meant to use it for the fashion week. And I had to spend, I called King Davis to make it. I paid the designer for everything, for custom shoes, custom outfits and everything. At that minute, 12 hours to that event, we made a new shoe. A new fits exactly the same fits I paid for. We made it in 12 hours. The fits took her 
nothing less than two weeks to make, but we made it in less than 12 hours. See. Aww. So Nigerian designers will... We'll mess you up. <laughs> we'll <laughs> mess <you> up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go on a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. This is The Creatives. My name is Doris and I have in the studio with me CEO Swag Originals and expert stylist Swazi. Swazi, me, I've been having so much fun and you've been giving me some, you know, backstory, some gist, gist that people don't even know. I mean, I like I'm a ball. So, so Swazi, yeah? yeah. Um, I mean, I know you style people like uh, celebrities like Simi, Daniel F. Young and Big Brothers Nini. Yeah. How was your experience with styling these people? Different experience with different clients. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy though. Um, I know working with Nini at first wasn't an easy one. You know, when they're out of Big Brother, everybody with their own opinion and stuff and all that, you know. Um, family members too, people will always tell you this is how they want it and all that. And at some point, everybody's like, okay, do your thing and that's it. So we've grown from being um, client and um, stylist, muse and the stylist, to being friends. And we're in that space where she allows me to be me, do whatever I want with her style, and be creative with it. And that's what we are doing right now. So then for Simi... No, sorry, I want, to, I want to ask you something. Did you style her for the Big Brother reunion? I styled her oh, seven months. Are you serious? There's this particular look I saw. She was wearing like a net piece thing, like a yeah. leggings. I really yeah. love that look. Yeah. Amazing stuff. You so you're talking. Even seen other are looks. you serious? Okay, okay, Swazi, okay. <laughs> because we gave them a fashion show for that reunion. Nice, <laughs> nice. I love it. Thank you. Energy. <laughs> so you were saying Simi. You're talking about Simi. So yeah, Simi. Um, I actually, okay. I start Simi. When I started working with Simi, the first time I worked with Simi wasn't for her, but was for her, for, um, what do they call it again? For people in the video. Oh, okay. For vixens and extras in the video. I remember the director calling me, Adasa Kuki, big shout out to Adasa. I remember him calling me saying, oh, I want you to style in Simi's video. And I was like, okay, maybe it's Simi. And he was like, no, I want you to style the extras. I want you to style the dancers. And, and I'm like, okay, okay, um, boss, why not see me? <laughs> he said, no, see me don't joke with her stylist and stuff. And I was like, okay, fine. He said, just give it your best. I said, okay, boss. I sent my assistant and everyone to the set, and I was busy with another client that day. And I remember my sister calling me. She was like, um, you need to be on this set. I was like, why? She said, you need to be here. I said, okay. I went there, I did my thing, and you know, I wasn't even, I didn't introduce myself to Simi or anything. So the next video shoot, the director said, Simi wants to work with you. Wow. <laughs> I said, are you serious? He said, yes. At first, I thought it was a joke. I won't lie to you. And I was busy. I was at a wedding having fun. The director would call me, send mood board. I'll say, ah, boss, I'm on it. I wasn't on anything. I was having fun. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, that's how but I was having fun and then he called me, called me, called me, called me and I was like, hmm, I think this is serious, so maybe see me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe see me, I'm actually styling. <laughs> and yeah, um, immediately I told my sister, let's leave this place, let's leave. She said, why? Ah, the, the, the thing hasn't even... I said, let's leave, let's go and create Moonball for Simi. I said, she said, are you sure it's me you're styling? Are you sure it's not Vixen? I said, let's go, whichever one. I created the mood, but I sent it to the director, and they were like, okay, he sent it to see me next minute. And this is like less than 30 something hours to the shoot. Wow. So, and they've been buzzing me to send mood, but like two days before the shoot. And I've been like, mm, I'm not sure it's the Simi shoot. I'm not sure because. Ah, yeah, it the might first be. time. Yeah, so. Yeah. Then they said, okay, Simi, like this, like this, like that, like that, work on it. And yeah. I worked on the outfits for her music video, So Bad, featuring Joe Boy. Um, I starred her, I starred the extras, I starred like everyone apart from Joe Boy. Um, the next time she called me again, she was like, okay, throughout her shows last year, all the shows she performed at, I starred her for all of them. Wow. Yes, and I also starred her for her concert. I remember that I starred 27 people um, on the day of her concert because I starred the live band, the dancers, the everybody including her as well. Then the new one we just did is her album cover. 
we did a couple of editorials for her album cover and she has released maybe one picture. Yeah, the one with the gold. Yeah. I like yeah. that one. And I can't wait for you guys to see the revealing looks. I really <laughs> love that one. Okay, so I want you to compare. I mean, you've been you're, you've been a swag boy since when you were in school, right? <laughs> so I want you to compare the style of the '90s to the style we currently have now. What do you think is a very significant change? Mm. Everyday fashion evolve. Um, Things keep changing and all that, but at the same time, the 90s style has a big influence on what is happening now. Okay, how so? I see a lot of Gen Zs dressed like the old school knowledge base and all that, and okay. it's and I'm like, okay, it's still old school, but at the same style, at the same time, they make it fashion. Mm -hmm. You see all those things, Genevieve, Rita Dominic, all those things they wore back then. I see a lot of them repeating it now, but maybe at the same time adding some other things to it to make it look more futuristic. I don't know if you mm. get what I mean. So, um, 90s, yeah. Now, yeah. I feel in as much style change, um, fashion change and all that, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that can be changed. A lot. As of now, you see people talking about, oh, pink is the new black, this one, that one, that one, that one. Okay, colors might keep changing. But at the same time, I don't think design changed that much. Mm -hmm. I tell people, I see creatives, I see designers recreating a dress they made in 1980, a dress they made in 2000, a dress they made in 1990. A dress Gucci made in Soso -so -so and they are recreating it and they are just adding one or two things or maybe doing it with the color that fit into mm. what is happening now. So I don't really think there is much, much, difference. much difference you get. I just feel it's, you know, it's the spice you add to it that makes it different. I see. That makes sense. Because, yeah. I mean, boots are in now. And boots are in. Yeah, you see people wearing papa's cap. You see people doing a lot of things. You see people... Now it's pink, it's um, it's neon green. Yes, it's, neon yeah, green. It's all these colors. Now, in two years, that it might not be these colors again. It might be brown, bogan. It might be anything. So colors keep changing, but the design, the pattern, I feel, it's just little spice to change it to add to make it look more futuristic. Hmm. Yeah. So as a stylist, so as a stylist and an expert at that, yeah. how can you say that? Um, Fashion has influenced the world. Hmm. Fashion has really influenced the world a lot. Now you see people wearing clothes that before, as of five years back, ten years back, <clears throat> a lot of people won't wear Kenya West design. <laughs> <laughs> as, of, <clears throat> as of ten years back, five years back, I know a lot of people won't wear because people feel like Fashion is meant to look this way. Fashion is meant to be this way. Fashion is meant to... I used to... I tell people, I say, who said you should wear suit with a tie and a proper shoes and that's what makes it covered? Who, who made that rules? You hmm. feel free to change it. Set your own rules. Make it look good. And that's just it. So it's... Fashion has really... I feel the, the common... The people <clears throat> back then... The people they call commoners or they feel old, what they wear or what they wore to such so event or what they are wearing is not fashion. Now it's fashion. You see people wearing a ton of clothes and all that. And yes. It's fashion. And <clears throat> instead of making Mr. A feel less when he's wearing that or feel like, oh, because I don't have money, that's why I'm wearing. You see people buy it with a lot of money. Hmm. That's something they are wearing. You see people. Fashion has really shaped the world. I know my producer <laughs> actually has a shirt that has like holes in it. And he paid a lot of money. And this is something that before, when you wear something like that, they say, ah, this one is it's dressing like a madman. <laughs> but now it's fashion. Mm. Now you see um, a brand release a shoes that looks like something that don't don't we know we know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's not drag them here. We know what you you're see, talking and about. People are buying it. People are paying so much money to yeah. buy. It. To me, I feel fashion has fashion has gone beyond um, the elites buying clothes or being the one to do the so-called fashion. Anyone with your budget, 
is anything you have can look good and look fabulous at the same time. Mm. So I think that's one thing fashion has done. Fashion has managed to shape the world in a way that anybody, anyone can af can afford fashion. Mm -hmm. It's no longer if you are here. <clears throat> fashion is for people that are here, all the elites, the people, the the bling bling people. The, the, in fact. In some cases, you don't even need to wear much blinks to make a fashion statement. Yeah, so. I agree. So, Swazi, what's, what advice can you give to an aspiring stylist? Hmm. Just do you. You don't need to go to a fashion school. You don't need to um, be an intern with any, any stylist or anybody. You have your phone. You have access to internet. You have YouTube. Once it's in you, it's in you. That's what I feel. It's not something... You can you force no though there are some people that force it and at the same time they still get it so mm -hmm. but at the same time it's not something you need to do too much once you have that passion to actually do this styling thing start you can start with your friends I started with my friends <laughs> <laughs> you can start with your friends you can start with people around you you can start with reaching out to designers telling them what you can do pulling fits from them before you get to that point of having a client that will pay you to make thought dresses for them and all that. You can start with, oh, let me pull this and do a shoot for my model. I'll do a shoot for this person. I'll do, do that, upload it on in, in, um, Instagram. Internet has made a lot of things easy. Mm. Now you see a lot of people becoming stars and all that just from Instagram or from Twitter or from Facebook. So once you have internet, just start. Oh. Just do you and keep learning. Keep evolving, keep getting better keep killing that ideas because one thing is when you have ideas that you want to really do you want to like oh i have this idea that i want to try i want to see what it, the outcome would be like i want to see what people's opinion would be like about this idea don't try that such things with your paid clients because it might end up being <laughs> before you it might end up refunding <laughs> the money on the day of the shoot so try that with people you know oh your models your collaboration people and all that yeah that's it. Thank you so much, Swazi, for coming. Thank you it was so an much amazing for interview. Me. Thank I you. Had fun. <laughs> So that was another exciting episode of The Creators, the entertainment show that takes you behind the scenes. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot like I did. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, please contact us on our social media platforms with hashtag The Creators. So from me, Doris Okore, and the entire creatives team, I'll see you next week with another exciting guest.